All right, uh, this is Dr. Sweeney, and I am uh, taking a look at some work on determinants. We're going to be looking at 3.2, this is properties of determinants. And so this is the first uh, part of this lecture. We're going to be talking um, specifically about some things or transformations on determinants and um, or, or changes to matrices and what happens to the determinant as a result of the changes to matrices. And so that'll become more apparent exactly what it is that we're kind of doing here um, in just a moment, okay? So a couple of things I want to I want to notice is um, first let's let's just take a look and, and review. <laughs> let's take a a let a be uh, two by two, and we're gonna let a be one negative one three two, okay. And so the determinant of a uh, written as determinant of a, okay, we're gonna write it like that is gonna be one times two minus three times negative one. And so consequently, that's gonna be two plus three, which equals five, right? So that's something I just wanna notice. I wanna make sure that everybody understands that right up front, okay? Um, now, let's suppose that we have A, a different A, we'll call this now B, okay? Different matrix. And let's say B is lower triangular, all right? So this is one, negative one, zero, um, two, all right? So the determinant of B, is going to end up equaling 1 times 2 minus 0 times negative 1. Okay, and that's 2. That's kind of interesting. I mean, like, it doesn't even really matter what that one is because it ends up getting multiplied by 0. Well, I wonder if that actually holds, right? So let's say, for example, we have a lower triangular matrix. So we're going to say let B be lower triangular. And we're going to only look at a 2 by 2 grid. All right. Okay, so let's say, for example, I have A11, uh, A12, 0, and A22. Okay, right, and that's B. And the determinant of B, then, is going to equal A11 times A12, uh, times A22, excuse me, minus 0 times A12. Well, that's just A11 times A12. All right, so it really doesn't even matter what A12 is. It just turns out that we're just going to get the multiplication of the diagonal. That's kind of cool. Okay, so at least in the 2 by 2 case, it looks like we're just getting the multiplication of the diagonal. Let's take a look at the 3 by 3. And so I'm not going to rigorously prove this, but I mean, I'm going to show you in the case of the 3 by 3. Let's take, for example, we have A11, A12, A13, okay? And then we have 0, and then we have A22, A23, and then we have 0, 0. And then we have a 3, 3. Okay. So the determinant of C is going to now equal a 1, 1 times, and this is going to be the determinant of this guy right here, right? Okay. Times, and then it'll be a 2, 2 times a 3, 3. Okay. Minus 0 times a 2, 3. All right. Minus, and then we'll have a 1, 2 times. And this one's going to be, interestingly enough, right, it's going to be this column times this uh, determinant of this column by this column matrix. So this is going to be 0 times A33 minus 0 times A23. Well, that's just going to end up being 0, isn't it? Plus, and then we're going to have A13 times, and then again, it's going to be this matrix determinant of this matrix right there. So that's going to be 0 times 0 minus... 0 times a22. What we want to notice is that this, like everything else, is getting multiplied by 0, right? So these two terms, they go away, all right? This term goes away, and all we're left with is this. a11 times a22 times a33, okay? And that's the determinant of our 3 by 3, all right? And so this is a kind of handy, handy little thing to have happen. You can actually, if you want to go in, you can check it for a 4 by 4 And what you'll see is, is that you're going to end up with, right, for example, this first term there, right, um, and it'll be multiplied by a matrix, and it'll be multiplied by a matrix again, right, a 3 by 3 matrix, but that is going to be lower triangular, right? So since it's lower triangular, what you're going to get is, is that its uh, determinant is only uh, the multiplication of its diagonal. So it ends up being this first term here right, times the diagonal of that next matrix. And then every other one ends up getting zeroed out, right? How we end up proving this is we prove it basically by induction, 
uh, which is a, a proving uh, proving method that we're actually not going to get into inside this class. But you take my word for it that this is exactly what get, what's going to happen. And if you're interested in it, I can point you to a proof. Okay. So what we're going to say, we're going to have this little call it theorem. If A is lower triangular, with, okay, um, actually, is lower triangular, we'll just say that, okay, then um, the determinant of A, right, written as determinant of A, is just going to simply equal, and this sign means the product, so the multiplication of the AIIs, right, or the AIJs uh, with J equal to I, right, um, a i j with j equal to i okay that is is it's just going to be the multiplication of the diagonal all right in other words the product of the diagonal all right so that is the first of my properties okay that is is that if i have a lower triangular matrix then what all I have to do is I just multiply the diagonal and that gives me my determinant. A lot easier that way, isn't it? Kind of cool. Now, the reason why we do this is because the next next point right here, we'll call this section number two, okay? And that is, we're going to talk now about um, row operations and the determinant. And so the effect of row operations on the determinant. And the determinant. So let's take, for example, let's say um, that what I end up doing, like let's let's say I start out and I want to multiply. So I've got this basic row operation, right, which is the permutation matrix, okay? And it is going to be multiplied by, right, our original matrix, which was 1, negative 1, 3, 2, all right? Now, what we know is that this is then going to give me negative 1, uh, excuse me, it's going to give me 3, 2, 1, negative 1. So that's my new matrix. Okay. And what I want to notice is, is that, okay, well, the determinant, we'll call this one here A, and we'll call this one here A star. All right. So our new matrix, the one that's going to be as a result of the row operation. So A, the determinant of A, okay, was equal to 1 times 2 minus negative one times three, right, which we had equal to five. Oh, we should, might as well just remember that. Our original matrix has a, a determinant equal to five. And then A star, on the other hand, so the determinant of A star is going to equal three times negative one, okay, minus two times one, which equals negative five. Well, I'm like a police officer. I don't believe in coincidences. I'm a mathematician, actually. I really don't believe in coincidences. I mean, I could go in and check, but I wonder, I wonder what actually the uh, what the determinant of this guy is. Okay, All right. I wonder what the determinant of zero one one zero is. Hmm. Well, let's check. So the determinant of zero one one zero equals zero times zero minus one times one, which equals negative one. It is not a coincidence that <clears throat> the determinant of this guy times a is going to give us the determinant of a star. So negative 1 times a, right, the determinant of a is equal to the determinant of a star, which is just a with the rows permuted. Okay? Hmm. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Now, the other question that I have, though, is, is whether or not, you know, do all permutation matrices actually have well, one, I, the first question that I have here is whether or not if I multiply two matrices together, right, will the determinant of their product equal uh, the determinant of each one individually multiplied together, right? So what I want to know, what I want to know is if I have AB, right, is if AB, right, is determinant of AB equal to the determinant of A 
times the determinant of e. Is that the case? Okay. And if it's the case, then that's kind of cool because then my permutation matrix times my um, my original matrix A is going to you know give me a really handy handy result, right? Okay. If not, then I got to kind of go back to the drawing board, and you know it turns out that what I thought was not a coincidence actually turned out to be just a coincidence, right? Which would suck. All right. So I look at this. I've got A B, right? And I want to see if I multiply the two of them together, will it give me the determinant of A times the determinant of B? Well, let's let's try it out with some two by twos. Okay. Again, this is the kind of thing that actually I'm not going to in fact go in and prove, but we're going to at least convince ourselves that it's going to happen. All right. So let's take for example, um, we'll take uh, three, one, two, negative two. Okay. And what we'll do is then we'll multiply it by that original matrix that we had. Right, one, negative one, three, two. Okay, and that's gonna then equal three times three is uh, six, and then negative three plus two is negative one, two plus negative six is negative four, and negative two plus negative four is negative six. All right, so this is our new, this is, this is equal to AB, okay? And so the determinant of AB is going to equal 6 times negative 6, which is negative 36, minus uh, negative 4 times negative 1. Okay, so this ends up being negative 40. That's great. Okay, now I know here, actually this was BA, wasn't it? Okay, I know A here, okay, is the determinant of A is equal to 5. And I needed to find the determinant of B right here, okay? And that's going to equal 3 times negative 2, so that's negative 6 minus 2, which equals negative 8, all right? So that means that, well, the determinant of B times the determinant of A is equal to negative 8 times 5, which equals negative 40, all right? So the two of these guys, they end up being equal to each other. Ooh, that's kind of cool. That's nice. That's handy. And it turns out that that, in fact, is true, okay? This is one of those things that's the property of the determinant. If A is square, if A and B are square, right? So this is actually really important because if A and B are not square, then we can't take the determinant, okay? So if A and B are square, then the determinant of AB equals the determinant of A, okay, times the determinant of B, which is just simply B. Sweet, that's great, okay? Now, so that's nice to know, that's good, okay? Um, given that that's the case, we now can actually use that for our, the work that we did with the permutation matrices. Excuse me. Okay, so remember, that what we had was we had the permutation matrix from 1, 2, okay, times A, yes? And the determinant of the permutation matrix times the, the determinant of A, that was negative 1 times 5, and so we ended up with negative 5, right? So it's great. So that's really good. Now what we need to show, or we want to show, so what we want to show is that pij, right, if we take any permutation matrix, its determinant will equal negative 1, because that would come in very handy when we start thinking about row operations, all right? Okay, so we're not going to do any rigorous proof right now, but, like, let's just take a look at it in the 2 by 2 and the 3 by 3 case, um, just to kind of convince you that if we take a permutation matrix that the determinant of permutation matrix is going to end up equal negative 1. Now we saw it in the case of the 2 by 2. Basically what ended up happening is, is that you change from the diagonal, right, okay, um, to, uh, well, you basically change diagonals, right? You had one was on the diagonal, one's on the diagonal for the original matrix, and then we actually went the exact opposite diagonal when we did the permutation matrix. Now let's say, for example, I take the permutation of 1, uh, one 2, okay? 
the permutation matrix for 1, 2, and the 3 by 3 is going to look like this. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay? And we'll take a look at the P13. And that's going to be um, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, and, excuse me, 0, 1, 0. And... and one zero zero okay and then we'll take a look at p23 okay and p23 looks like this one zero 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 one zero one zero okay and that's p23 now if we look here right for p12 what's happened is that i've got this matrix here okay and then i've got this value and this value right and they that matrix there Okay, so we're going to take this value, right, times the determinant of 1 times 1 minus 0 times 0. So that actually ends up being positive 1, but, but, remember, this is the second term. Okay, so this is the second term, and so since it's the second term, it's actually negative 1 times 1 times 1 minus 0 times 0. Okay, or negative 1. In the case of P13, P13, all right, we've basically got the same situation as we had before. This will end up being a positive one, but the determinant here is actually negative one. All right, so this ends up being positive one times zero times zero minus one times one, which ends up equaling negative one. All right, and in this case for P23, we get one, but then times the determinant of this, so this is one times zero times zero minus one times one again, okay? And that ends up equaling negative 1. So in each and every case for the permutation matrices, what we end up with is, is we end up with um, a, a negative 1 as the determinant. So that's actually the first key little point, or the second key little point. Okay? So if Pij is a permutation matrix, then the determinant of Pij is equal to negative 1. All right, good to know. Handy. Next up, right, so we got permutations. Let's talk about multiplication. So multiplication, all right, okay, a multiplication matrix looks like something like this, right? So here's an example. We'll let A equal a multiplication matrix. Or why don't we call it M, M, multiplication matrix. And let's say it's, three, zero, zero, one, right? So that's gonna multiply the first row in a two by two by three, okay? Well, that, the determinant of M is just gonna equal three times one. And that's because M is lower triangular, since M is lower triangular. All right, in fact, it doesn't matter how big the matrix is, all right? That multiplication matrix is always going to end up being lower triangular. So if we kind of think about it, we're like, oh, the multiplication matrix is always lower triangular. Like, say, for example, I take M2K, right, on a 4x4 four four matrix, um, or 4x4 four four matrix, I'm just going to write it in parentheses there. What we'll get here is we're going to get 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, K, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and the determinant of M2K, right, is just then going to equal 1 times K times 1 times 1, all right, which is K. Ooh, that's kind of handy to know, right? So it turns out that the determinant, so it, uh, the determinant of MIK is going to simply equal K. That's fantastic. Good to know. Hey, question. What if, okay, what if K is um, multiplied by any any n by n matrix? 
So what we're asking is, is what's the determinant of k? Now our instinct is to say that it's k times the determinant of a. But this is actually wrong. This is not correct. This is incorrect. Okay, that's not true. All right, and here's why. When we multiply k times a, right, k times a is actually k times every element times a11, k times a22, right, k times a33, so on and so on and so forth. Okay, and right, k times a21, excuse me, a12, a13, sorry, a21, and so on and so on and so forth, down to k, a, i, j, right, uh, k, n, k, 1, n, all right, and then all the way all over to wherever we are over here, okay? So if a is 4 by 4, if a, excuse me, if a is square, right, then what we're actually ending up with is we're going to end up with a k multiplied by every value along the diagonal. So every value along the diagonal is going to end up being, being multiplied by k. In fact, everything is going to be multiplied by k. So what it turns out, right, it's n by n, it's going to end up being k, the determinant, turns out the determinant of k, a, is going to actually equal k to the n times the determinant of a. Okay, so we're actually going to have to take k to the nth power, and that's the, the dimension of the matrix. Okay, because what we're going to do, because we have multiplied every element by k, not just like one row, we've done every row. Now, the way that we can look at this, so a way to look at this, is to notice, and this is going to come up a lot, especially later on in the course, that ka okay, is equal to k times the n by n identity. Right? So basically what you can do is you can, like, uh, you'll take k, right, the scalar, you multiply it by the identity, and then you multiply it by a, and that actually gives me what I'm, I'm looking for, right? Okay? Well, this matrix, right, it's got k's, and then zeros all the way down, and then another k, zeros all the way down, right? Okay. And all the way down, k's all the way down, right? Times a, we know, okay, the determinant, we know the determinant of k times i n, right? This guy right here is just the multiplication of the diagonal, all right? It's going to equal k to the n. Yes? And so, the determinant of k times i to the n times a is going to equal the determinant of k times i to the n times the determinant of a, which equals k to the n times the determinant of a. Okay? So in the case of just multiplying a single row, you're going to multiply k times the determinant. You're just going to multiply the one row. On the other hand, if you're actually multiplying by a scalar, right, you're multiplying the matrix by a scalar, then what you have to do is you actually have to raise it to the uh, dimension of the matrix, right, and then that times the determinant, right, because it's actually a different process. So be very careful with that kind of thing, okay? All right, so that's that's matrix multiplication. Kind of handy to know, all right? All right, so we got one more operation, and that one more operation is addition, okay? Addition, row operations, right? So this is my third one, addition. And so let's take a look. Each addition matrix, let's look at a three by uh, a two by two. All right. So let's take A12 and we're going to multiply by K. Or excuse me, A12 K. And so that's going to end up being 1K01. And then let's also look at um, A21K. Right. So this is in the case of a two by two. Yes. And so this is going to end up being 1, 1, uh, K, and 0. All right. Now, the determinant, the determinant of a 1 2 k, right, is going to equal, since the determinant of a 1 2 k, it's just going to equal 1 times 1, right, because k ends up being multiplied by 0. So consequently, I don't have to deal with k. 
oh, look, but the same thing's happening over here with A21K. Okay, A21K is going to equal, or is going to give me a determinant of me, A12K is going to equal just 1 times 1. It's going to equal 1. All right. Huh. Well, let's think about it. If I have any size matrix, any size, uh, you know, any size addition matrix, what are they going to look like? All right. Like, let's say, for example, I look at uh, A13, um, <clears throat> A13K, all right, and a 3 by 3. A13K is going to equal 1, 0K, zero, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. All right. And notice that this one here, it's upper triangular. All right. You know what? We didn't talk about this. In the case of lower triangular matrices, we end up with just the multiplication of the diagonal. Turns out it's the same thing with upper triangular ones too, for the same reason. Right. Basically, you're just going to zero everything out. So this ends up being, right, is going to end up being 1 right, times this matrix right here, but that's the identity matrix, okay? <laughs> there you go. I mean, so this is, just, you know, the determinant, okay, of A13K is still just going to end up equaling 1. Well, it turns out that that's exactly how all of them are, all right? And again, we're not going to get into a proof on this end. Um, what we're just going to say is we're going to make a statement and kind of show you how that works. Um, so if, right, Okay, we have an addition matrix. A, I, J, K. Okay, then the determinant of the addition matrix, A, I, J, uh, K, excuse me, is equal to one. So addition matrices have an, uh, are, are equal to one. Whoa, that's cool. So what we've got here basically kind of summarize Right, so summary one, the determinant of AB is equal to the determinant of A times the determinant of B. Two, the determinant of PIJ, right, no matter what the IJ are, is going to equal negative one. Three, MIK is going to equal K, right, the determinant of MIK, the multiplication matrix, and four, the determinant of the addition matrix a i j k is going to simply equal one. Oh, that's pretty snazzy. I think so. I, I, so I always found it kind of like intriguing. It's like oh, things like that that kind of work out, especially in linear algebra. Linear algebra kind of does cool stuff like that. All right. So let's put this to work because sometimes if we have to do this by hand, and actually if like say for example you're programming computers, sometimes if you get a big enough matrix, you don't want to go calculate its determinant utilizing like the, the basic uh, rules of finding the determinant. Instead, what you're going to want to do is row reduce, okay? Because row redu reduction might actually take fewer computations, and then use the row operations in order to find your determinant. Because if you notice that once you're down to a lower triangular matrix, dude, it's simple. You just multiply along the diagonal. Done. Okay, so let's try it out. All right, so here's an example. We're going to find the determinant using row reduction. All right, so we're going to let A equal. 3, negative 2, 2, 3. Okay? Right? And we're going to find the determinant of A. All right? Well, now, the computation for this is really not all that hard. You're normally not going to do this. All right? Like I said, this process is really only when you have really large matrices. But let's just see how it works. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and row reduce this. All right? So I got 3, negative 2, 2, 3. First thing that I'm going to do is I am going to take one third, okay? Um, excuse me. You know, multiply row one by one third, all right? And that's going to give me one negative two over three. 
and two, three. Then I'm going to add negative two of row one to row two. Okay, so this gives me one, negative two thirds, zero, and then this is going to be nine thirds minus two thirds, or excuse me, nine thirds plus um, plus four thirds, so that's going to end up being 13 thirds. Okay, thirds plus four thirds, 13 thirds, great. Then, next up, I'm going to multiply row two by three over 13. All right, and that's going to give me then one negative two thirds, zero, one, Then I'm going to add row two to row one. I'm going to add two thirds of row two to row one. And that's then going to give me one, zero, zero, one. Now, you know what? I didn't actually have to go that far. I could have actually stopped. Um, and I'm going to tell you why I could have stopped. I could have, in fact, stopped right here at the second term because now it's lower triangular. And since it's lower triangular, I know that it's just going to be the multiplication of those two. So you could have just stopped right there. In fact, why don't we do it both ways? All right. We'll first make this, this is the identity, okay? So we, this one is row reducing down to the identity. So what we know is, is that, so now let's use this information in order to actually um, find the determinant of A, okay? So one is that we're gonna say, okay, well, we've got A, and I'm gonna multiply, right, row one by one third, then I added, row one, negative two of row one to row two. And then I did a multiplication matrix by three over 13. And then I took an addition matrix, A21, and I did it by two thirds, okay? And this ends up being linking the identity, right? Because I row reduced down to the identity, so that was great, okay? Now, if I take the determinant of both sides, so the determinant of all this stuff, A21, two thirds, times M2, three thirteenths, times a one two times negative two times m one one third right times a that determinant equal to and the determinant of the identity is always okay and this is the identity two is always going to equal one you can go confirm that for yourself all right this has got ones on that diagonal it's got to be one yes so what this is going to give me then is it'll give me one times three over thirteen times one times one third times the determinant of A is equal to one. So this now says that one over 13 times the determinant of A equals one. And so consequently the determinant of A simply equals 13. So we'll go back and look at our original matrix A and see if this actually matches up. A, if you remember, was three, negative two, two, three okay and so the determinant of a is going to equal three times three minus two times negative two which ends up equaling 13. ha they match good news right okay so basically we have a process here okay so the process for determining the determinant via row reduction Right, one, row reduce the matrix. Okay, first, all right, and then make sure that you record the elementary row operations. Two, transfer the matrix the row operations into elementary matrices. Three, write the resulting matrix as the product of elementary matrices.
and then four, okay, solve for the determinant. All right, I'll do another couple of uh, examples, or I'll do an example of one where we might be able to use this for, say, in like an unknown matrix inside of a follow-up video. All right, so this concludes the video.